brave gay activist in Qatar protests the 2022 World Cup. Peter Thatchell, a 70-year-old veteran British LGBT activist, stood outside the National Museum of Qatar for just over half an hour holding a placard that reads, quote, Qatar arrests, jails, and subjects LGBTs to conversion with the hashtag, hashtag Qatar anti-gay. Anti Thatchell, among uh, along with many others, is boycotting the 2022 World Cup, which is slated to begin on November 20th in Qatar, citing the poor treatment of migrant workers and the LGBT community as the primary reason. Mr. Thatchell said in a statement that the Qatari police detained him for 49 minutes and interrogated him. The Qatari government later released a statement denying that Peter Thatchell and his colleague were arrested and detained. They claimed that he was, quote, cordially and professionally asked to move to the sidewalk. Thatchell staged a similar protest in 2018 when he protested against the poor treatment of LGBT individuals in Russia before the World Cup, where Russian authorities arrested him. Homosexuality for both men and women is illegal in Qatar, and the LGBT community is known to face severe abuse and harassment while held in the country's detention centers. So I thought this was awesome. Sheikh B is saying, that's ballsy. Okay. This is actually crazy. Like, so I was talking to ex-Muslim activist Jimmy Bongesh, and he was talking about how in the UK, like, Peter Thatchell can be very controversial because of his opinions on trans stuff. Like, he's basically, like, a gender abolitionist, and a lot of people don't like him for that because they think he's... Oh, like, I like him even more for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um so a lot of, you know, people think that he's like too far gone and oh my God, you know, this is not good. And, you know, the whole transgender conversation is like very controversial in the UK. And Jimmy was kind of opposing on the opposing side when it comes to that topic. And Peter Thatchell, yeah. he, he, he was like, people say about him, like this guy has balls. Like, this is what it's about. Like, this man is 70 years old. He's 70 years old. And he's like, no, I'm going to Qatar by myself. And I'm going to conduct this protest. Like, I think there's like a big schism happening in the LGBT community right now. And I think what we should get back to is stuff like this. Where like, this is about human rights. This is about protection of minorities, pluralism, and individual liberties. And... I just love this. I think this is so brave. And I think, you know, all the people, many people who go after Peter for their disagreements over this or that, they don't have the balls to do something like this um, and put themselves in a position where maybe they could have serious legal consequences to conducting something like this. Um, luckily, they just detained him for a little while, questioned him, and then emphasized that oh, he yeah. should return to his country as soon as it's convenient. <laughs> so the consequences yeah. were as minimal as possible, but it's still really impressive. Yeah, I, I mean, Qatar would, in this in this context, I don't think Qatar would dare be abusive to him or touch him, either, especially because mm -hmm. he's a foreigner. But still, this is very brave. And I would like to cheer my cough syrup to this man. Cheers. I know, if you guys haven't noticed, Armin has just been drinking cough syrup out of the bottle for like. I am weeks. trying. That's the no. This is the only reason I can continue with the stream because I have, to, or else I would be coughing throughout the stream. But yeah, oh, it's pretty impressive. By the way, I'm a gender abortion. Like you straight out of the bottle on camera. What else? What else? How do you? How else would you do it? You take the little Let cap and you fill it up to the dose and. Anyways. That's not, that's not this, how this cap works. No, there's okay. the other caps, you know. Yeah, but this one doesn't have that. So what's wrong? Okay. Anyways, I'm also a gender abolitionist, and I had a, a argument with Jimmy about this. Mm -hmm. like, I'm glad. I thought, I thought all British LGBT community has gone full turf. So we see that that's not the case. We have gender abolitionist British... Um, gay activist, which is great. Yeah, I think. Um, wait, there is. By the way, guys, I don't know if you, people do people understand what gender abolitionist means. Like, we should have a debate about it because I don't think Susie, you're you're not a gender. You're like more on Jimmy's side, right? 
Uh, not completely, but I'm not a gender abolitionist. I used to be. Okay, when I am I was a gender abolitionist. Woke and lost my mind and thought I was trans. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't, okay. Not being gender abolitionist and being woke are not necessarily the same thing, but we could talk about that. Later. The vast majority of the time it is. Okay. But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily the case. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Back to the story. Yes. Apparently, the Peter Thatchell Foundi Foundation has claimed that this is the first ever LGBT protest in a Gulf state. So the first ever LGBT protest in Qatar and the first ever LGBT protest in a Gulf state. If true, how badass is that? That's pretty badass. So I'm saying uh, Qatar is horrible as they also trick people into working uh, contracts to find themselves treated as slaves. Yes, another problem with Qatar is um, slavery people's passports yes. are taken. That's one thing he talked about when he did this was like, this is something you want to highlight. Actually, Armin, if you scroll down in the um, right up on our site, we have a little video. Oh, so let's let's watch that. Go. Wait. Thanks everyone for your messages of support. I'm now released and will be heading to the airport soon. I staged my protest on the main road outside the National Museum of Qatar for 35 minutes before state security arrived, followed up by police. Um, I was arrested and detained for 49 minutes and subjected to interrogation about where I was from, where I was going, but I have now been released. But the most important thing is this protest was to shine a light on the abuse of human rights in Qatar. This is the first ever LGBT plus protest in Qatar or any Gulf state. But also, I sought to draw attention to the abuse of the rights of women and migrant workers as well. I stand in solidarity with those brave Qatari human rights defenders who cannot express their point of view because they fear arrest, jail, and possibly even torture. I salute them. They are the true heroes. Okay, that's very important the way he framed it. That's pretty amazing because he is like, look, this is like so amazing because he's like, it's not about me. He likes try to read because this is difficult for an activist for this re, for these places to do. Okay, the only reason why he's released is because he's British. Okay, because if he was from the Gulf, he wouldn't be this easily let go. Right. And when so he's, Qatar talks about, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, so he is doing what amazing activists like him do. He's like acknowledging that real act, you know, the, he's saying he's saying that the real activists are the blah blah blah, like are the people who are in these places or take doing the same thing I'm doing with a lot greater risk of so like this is I don't know, like this is perfect. This is a perfect message, a perfect protest, and you know, make made history setting set, you know hopefully leading the way for others to come but go on i think that's the most important point because he's highlighting the fact that people actually from qatar like cannot do this qatari people cannot do this and when you read because so qatari officials have been pressed super hard about how lgbt people will be treated when they go attend the world cup right and this has been a huge point of concern and the media is highlighting this constantly and the officials are basically like, yeah, you can hold hands with a man in public, blah, blah, blah. Like, no one cares. You can bring a flag. It's fine. Da, da, da. But if you read the subtext of what the Qatari officials are saying, it's very clear that their, their, their laws and their attitudes are for foreigners. And the liberties that they are affording are for foreigners. They're not for Qataris themselves. They're not for their own citizens. They are subjected to a totally different set of rules and they stand by those rules. And so that's what I liked about what he said. It's like highlighting the fact that other people can't do this because the cost of them is so great and the rules that are applied to them are completely different than what's available to him. Um, so shouts out to Peter Thatchell. Like, like I said, most people would not be concerned about doing something like this at the age of 70 years old, especially with what could happen to them in detention like they really don't know but this man he's like no this is what i'm doing i'm going here and I'm, yeah like so brave amazing 
Kenny is saying, ignorant question, what's a gender abolitionist? That's a good question. Some, yeah, somebody who, like me, who doesn't believe um, gender. Okay, so there's, I'm not one of the one of those people who thinks gender doesn't have a utility. Um, I think gender will eventually stop having a utility. It's a, so sure you should say, answering your question somewhat. Gender is a short social construct. Uh, destroy it both socially and institutionally. Okay, unlike other gender abolitionists, I don't think you need to make an effort to destroy gender, okay? I don't think this is a point of, I don't care about it as a point of activism. I think it will just happen. I think like um, dividing you think society- that everyone will have their own individual gender? Yes, basically this is an extreme version of individualism to the point where you are, people are not defining their identity based on their categorizing the entire your identity in two large categories of men and women or like even multiple ones five six seven eight at some point people are so unique in their, in their self-discovery and what fits their identity um that having categories of men and women as identities just makes absolutely no sense it's kind of like you know, think about your identity as something that you choose and you go to the store and we used to have two that you choose from, you like man or woman, and now we're having more than two. Eventually it will be as many as we have people. And you just go and it's like, uh, you can pick whatever outfit that you want um, and it will be unique to you. So, and I think that would just happen naturally. It's not a point of activism that people are like, some people are pushing for it. And I do believe like to, like people like, oh, you think gender has no utility? No, gender today has utility. Gender identity today has utility, especially for trans people. Gen like one of the, well, not especially, but like for example, for trans people. Like I don't, if you could take gender to, away today, I would be like, no. Like imagine the trans people who, their entire lives, they wanted to be men, um, but they were seen as women or vice versa. So imagine if you take that away from them, like you're like, oh, like imagine a gender abolition is telling a trans man that you're not a man. Like man is like nothing. There's no, there's no such thing as man. It's a social construct. Like, no, like we, it is a major, like it's currently, I see myself as a man, okay? And, and I want to see myself as a man. I'm comfortable seeing myself as a man. Uh, most people see are comfortable seeing themselves as men or women, but I think at one point this will not have a utility anymore. Right now, it has a lot of utility, so I wouldn't remove it today. Does that make sense? Really? I think there's some stuff about your argument that isn't internally consistent. Like what? Well, I mean, it's way too big of a discussion to get into right now. Okay. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.